Almost two years ago, we left it all behind for a chance at the sailing adventure of a lifetime. It has not been smooth sailing since then, but together we are learning and laughing our way through. Our hope is that if we laugh long enough, we can make our merry way around the world. And this... This is a Millennial Falcon. That's what's your great achievement of the morning. <sighs> well, you remember that douchebag the other day that made that nasty comment about how inexperienced I was? Oh yeah. Well, here's some food for thought, you <laughs> prick. <laughs> how do you like that one for inexperience? <laughs> <laughs> totally, uh, totally not inexperienced. I right? wanted candy stripes, it's a fashion statement. <laughs> um, yeah, in my haste to get moving, I, uh, I coiled up the furler line the wrong way. Consequently, when we furled in the jib that we had just hoisted, we have a lovely candy strap. With most of the pieces back together and some time to kill before crossing season began, we decided to go for a shakeout sail to St Bart's. We are finally off. We are just hauling up our windlass now and it'll be the first time that we've kind of used it since uh, Adam did that adjustment to it. Hopefully, hopefully it works. Um, we were just saying to, I was just saying to Adam, they're like, I don't know why, I'm feeling a little bit nervous. I think it's because maybe like, it is a little bit windy today. Oh no, it's not really actually. But in this, um, in this anchorage, it's a little bit windy. So I'm thinking that the waves out there and wind out there is gonna be really, you know, quite bad. And uh, I'm obviously not used to it after being at anchor for a little while. Um, I hope someone, I hope people, other people are like this too, that they kind of get a little bit nervous after being an anchor for a while and not having sailed for, you know, a few weeks. <laughs> it's really, it's really stupid, I know, but still. Works pretty well. Yeah? Yeah, you can't, um, you can't use it to like bring up the anchor straight. You have to manually pull that up. Oh, fair enough. Because I yeah. tried and it started like bent the metal. Oh no. I was like, it didn't pull rip it out or anything, but it definitely was like, I don't, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Our first day sail after six weeks at anchor turned into one of those days where it just wasn't coming together for us. We did not get very far. The following morning after a change of scenery and a restful night, we were raring to go again. But first, breakfast. How's breakfast coming? Oh God, so we just did the anchor and I'm just making us some breakfast so that we are well fed before we go. Um, I just, oh my God, look what I did. Freaking open up this side of the spice thing instead of that side. Oh my God. Oh, that smells so bad of oregano. Like I like oregano, but not in this amount. Breakfast is served, Adam. Yummy. Can't wait. What? It's just a big pile of onions. So? <laughs> Held together with any. Alright, we've had our terrible breakfast and uh, we are now getting our anchor up, ready for a sail. We're going to pull out our gym, but last time we tried to do this, it didn't go so well. So hopefully today we'll be better when we try and do it. Stage one of actually getting it down has gone better so far. It's not banging around like it was last time. Oh See? wow! And it's because it's bent. When you bring it out this way, it gets yeah. wedged between that and this part of the ring. Oh wow! It should just be sitting. That should be flat, and yeah. it should be sat down, and it should just be, you know, rotating. Yeah. I don't know if there's anything we can do about that. I have to fix, get it, get it, like bend it straight and re-weld it. Really? How do you do that without taking it off? Come we on. have to take it off. Yeah, yeah, I can get it off. It's just we can't do that exercise today. Damn it. So we've only been out here now for about half an hour. We've learned so many half lessons. Half an hour, you reckon? 
Maybe? Feels like we've been doing this for three hours. It's been a, <laughs> it's been a great little training session. Mate. It has, yeah. We're, we're kind of like in training. That This is uh, our stance this morning. That, okay, we're back into training mode. And we hoisted the pole up. We got it out under complete control Sorry, from the front and the back. Um, and everything went fine. But once we got the pole set, we discovered that the ring that the pole sits on on the mast track is like bent upwards and it's restricting the pole's movement and just bending it more and more. So we can't. So unfortunately, yeah. we couldn't continue that training session. Yeah. So we were, we were this close. We definitely need a few more practice runs and try to get the time down a little bit. <laughs> but um, the system of getting the pole up, and it's a mammoth pole, it is like, it's, it's huge. It's got to be 20 feet. It's ridiculous. At least, at least 20 feet. And it's not telescopic, feet. it's solid. It must feels like it's made of lead. It's huge. So it's a big job for just two people to get up. Um, I felt so bad when I was just like, let it go and I'll take a weight. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for not helping right now. But no, that's progress. So now we're just, yep. just running down to the uh, western side of St. Martin where we'll harden up on the breeze and we should have a nice beam reach mm. all the way to St. Martin. No, to St. Bart's. that Arthur from BCF in, in, in uh, Gold Coast, Queensland um, looked at, found us on YouTube of all things and, uh, and said, hey, how you going? It's Arthur from BCF, how'd you catch any bloody fish yet? And we've, since, since then, well, I think we've caught one. We caught one, uh, one mahi and a few barra. Um, so we gotta get a fish for Arthur. We've got for a, those people who don't even know what BCF is, can you explain? Um, like boating camp, it's a boating camping fishing store. It's like Bass Pro for, for Americans. It's Australian's Bass Pro. I bet they'd be happy to hear that. <laughs> so we, uh, we went into B BCF and we got a heap of lures and, uh, and Arthur served us when we bought all these lures and so he found us again. Exercising, human palm mode. <laughs> it's actually working. I know, it's all you gotta do, you just keep it from flapping, that's all, all it's doing. We're always finding ways to be frugal on a boat. <laughs> Who needs whisker poles? As we rounded the western tip of the island, we discovered the breeze had a little more south in it than we had hoped and was dwindling fast. We decided to enjoy the rest of the afternoon sailing and pull into Simpson Bay on the south side of St Martin for the night before motoring onwards the following day. You never just stay there, do you? Nope. I'm trying to film you and you're like, oh, I can do this, I can do that, I can do this. Down there and look regal. The port has its own boat. Not like a tender, not a dinghy. It has a yacht. A triple, quadruple spreader yacht. What? It's got to be bigger than my boat. Oh Our my boat. God. Oh my God. The boat has a boat. <laughs> I can make on that boat. I'd be, even be happy with that. It's just mini boat. Um, that's ridiculous. That is absolutely insane. How's he gonna get it down? But he has like the biggest so crane lifter. Do you reckon he can give us a haul out? Oh, oh I know, right? Yeah. And it's not like it's like a little trailer sailor either. Like, I know. It's got a pilot house. Look at the. It's got a deck cylinder. How big do you reckon that actual boat is? It's gotta be forty plus feet. No, no, I bet like oh, the actual, that's like... Right. Jeez, I don't know. It's got to be like, at least 150 feet. <laughs> that's insane. I've really seen it all now. I see the water pumps out. Yep. Just changing out the plungers. Old plunger. All cracked on the inside. New plunger. Ooh, it's fucking white. Perfect. In theory, this is the last piece of the puzzle that we need. It arrived um, the other day and we're finally putting it in. So, after this, our water maker in should be working properly. <laughs> With the plungers installed, we were back underway and Adam was feeling experimental. Adam, do you want to tell people what your coffee experiment is? 
don't know. I feel like I haven't got the patent on it yet. So if we put it out to the world, I better put a provisional patent on it. So, uh, I've got peppermint tea percolated to like moderate strength. And then you put it in the steam press to use it as to let it rise up through the coffee. <laughs> Voila, peppermint coffee. <laughs> and why do you think peppermint coffee is a good idea in the first place? Because that just well, you remember, well, do you remember when they had that? When we were looking for the boat and they had that sale at Wawa's, it was like one dollar coffee, and, it's, oh, yeah, and yeah. you could bring any vessel you like. Yeah. <laughs> and if you could fill it, you could have it for a dollar. And so you were like all hooked on all those like oh, various yeah. flavored creamers. Freaking and like, I, there was like yep. an Irish, was Irish, Irish coffee. coffee cream or something, and it was like a minty cream. So uh, my hope is that if I have a sweet peppermint coffee, it'll yep. be a little bit like that. And it was done in the steam press, so it's going to be fancy. <laughs> I can smell it getting there. It's going to be like the longest film in the world while I wait for him to emerge with his coffee. Can you hear that? Shaking as we got there laughing. Your face. <laughs> it didn't come off the way I hoped. No, what's wrong with it? I definitely can taste it, but it, it's a. Uh, it hasn't blended with the coffee well. It, it's oh. sort of. It's oh. almost like. Imagine if you were to be burning oh, in, no. like mint leaves. You know, it's like that, yeah. like burnt, like you can taste, it tastes smoky, like smoky burnt peppermint leaves. Maybe that's how I can brand it. <laughs> <laughs> smoky peppermint coffee. Oh, I see what you mean. It's, it's not like bad. I mean, it's, it's definitely drinkable. It's a very, very subtle taste. So it's still drinkable. I need to pick me up. I've got work to do this afternoon. All this uh, 10 knots cruising at three and a half is a very relaxing, so I need a coffee. Okay. Yeah, this is true. Back to it, back to our positions of the day. It's doing that thing where they just Yep. Please lie dead. That's it. Call it free, mate. I don't want you as much as you don't want to be caught. Oh, he's such a good looking one too. He'd be so, he'd be so edible. He's a good looking fish, yeah. Oh, I'll let it go. You. Oh, at least he's not swallowed a hole. He's just caught the nip. Just caught a bit of it. Alright. Alright, do you want that um, thing as well? Don't you take my lure. Uh... Alright. Oh, he's a beast! Whoop. Yep. <laughs> Alright, that was easy! <laughs> Did you break any hooks off? No. <laughs> oh, that was creepy. He was like looking at me and it was like ready, <laughs> he was like, <laughs> No! I didn't want to stick my finger up in his gills because that would have really hurt him. Yeah. And he's too fat to grab around the tail. Yeah. And he's so lively. It's like, what do you want me to do, mate? Spit it out. <laughs> <laughs> Adam's just informed me that we're actually stopping off at a completely different anchorage that I thought we were. Um, so, our anchorage will be there for tonight, and it's um, a private island apparently. Um, and you're allowed to stay a maximum of seven days, we won't be staying for seven days. Um, but I think it's uh, free morning balls too, so that's where we'll be staying tonight. Morning balls there. Okay. We can test out our new box now. Doesn't say anchoring prohibited or anything, does it? Um, I think there are only like one or two boats there at the moment but uh, it's not inhabited by anyone and it's a private island so we're kind of looking forward a little bit to uh, exploring here maybe just going for a hike because we haven't been so active recently yeah. about okay. 10 moorings apparently yeah. and plenty of room to anchor if the moorings are full everyone here's like oh it's crowded there's so many charter boats there are two boats there and everyone's like it's a great spot for a hike which I've been hanging out for dropping the sails uh, catamaran behind us also just left, so there's only one boat left in the anchorage. Oh, 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 oh. Shall be ours by the time that. I know we're gonna through. give a real skeezy look. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Should we just anchor like really, really <laughs> close? 
Victor is a French dude. Along with us finally figuring out how to use wind vane mode on our um, autopilot, oh, and also the self tacker as well on our autopilot, because we actually read the instructions, um, I've also figured out as well, on the recommendation of somebody else who does it, that Navionics, um, which is the chart plotting software that we use, um, as well as our Garmin, but Navionics specifically has a um, track your route option, which I've never ever used. And we've used this thing for like 10 months, a year almost and I've never used it, but this trip we have used it. So we have sailed 36 nautical miles. I accidentally forgot to set the timer. So it looks like we've been sailing for 15 hours, um, but it's really, really cool. It shows you your path and everything. It's fantastic. So if we were gonna sail this distance as the crow flies, it would be 16 nautical miles. However, we have sailed 36 nautical miles. So that is pretty much the summary of sailing in general. Ads? Do you want to tell people why you've got this music on? It's Millie's favourite song. <laughs> so long story short. The CD was in the CD player when we bought the boat and we tried to take it out a few times and it just kind of goes and so I'm like, I guess it's staying there. And I like to think that this is Millie's favourite CD and <laughs> she won't release it. And so every time she's well behaved, I put it on. Yeah. And lately, I, if you've been watching for a while, you'll know that I'm working my way very slowly through the Patrick O'Brien um, Master and Commander series. And, and I started listening to this when I read that just at night, just sitting on the couch. And it, it grows on you. So now, you know, whenever Millie's well behaved or I'm reading that and I need some, like, background music, you put that on. <laughs> Such a regal boat we have. <laughs> it was quite strange the first time I came home and I was like, what the hell is Adam listening to? There you go, he was reading. She likes what she likes. 